What is cryonics? The cryonics idea is that people be frozen at very cold liquid nitrogen temperatures immediately after their legal death in the hope that they can be revived in the future when medical technology has improved and permits them to come back cured of what they died of. What is the Cryonics Institute? Uh, the Cryonics Institute is a nonprofit membership corporation that exists to help its members make preparations for and then become frozen after they die. Um, CI, as we call it for short, uh, is in the Detroit area. We have uh, over a thousand members and more than a hundred patients who are in frozen storage. How did you get involved? Uh, I got involved actually um, through my family. My father, Robert Ettinger, was the founder of the cryonics movement. Uh, wrote the first book uh, about cryonics uh, that was sold on a wide scale, The Prospect of Immortality. And uh, I learned about it at the dinner table. In fact, when I was 15, my father was in California for the freezing of the first human being. And local television stations here in Detroit wanted somebody to comment, and I ended up being going on TV and being the commentator at the age of 15. So I've been talking about the cryonics idea now for about 45 years. How did your father come up with the idea? My father's history is kind of interesting because it illustrates, I think, a lot of the premises behind cryonics. My father was an infantry lieutenant in World War II, and he was very badly wounded. Uh, his, his legs were riddled with shrapnel as he was standing up to try to sight the artillery uh, during the Battle of the Bulge. And uh, it was touch and go for him for quite a while. At first, some of the doctors thought he might die and then later thought that his legs would have to be amputated. But my grandfather, his father, uh, searched out what was then cutting edge medical technology in terms of bone grafts, and they were able to save my father's legs. And the lesson that taught my father is that there could be a big difference between yesterday's medicine and tomorrow's medicine uh, in terms of saving your life. My, my father then, in the course of the next few years, which he spent in and out of hospitals, learned about uh, some of the early research in cryobiology in the preservation through freezing of organisms and the use of so-called cryoprotective chemicals to protect against freezing damage. And my father thought, well, the obvious thing is sooner or later we will freeze people and give them a chance to come back in the future. And he waited for that to happen, and it didn't. And then ultimately uh, he wrote his book, uh, which was published in the early 1960s, to advocate the idea. Even later, he then founded the Cryonics Institute, uh, which is the organization that I'm a member of today, that he was the longtime president of, and where he is stored and frozen today. Is your father still alive? Uh, my father died at 92, just a couple of years ago. Uh, had a long life, but he wanted a longer one, and, and hopefully he will have a longer one. Why would someone want to be frozen at 92? Well, you know, some people might say if they're 20 or 30 or 40, well, 90, that sounds like plenty long life. And I think my father would have said, that sounds great until you're 90. And my father enjoyed his life, wanted to live longer, wanted to see the future. Uh, in fact, uh, my father was looking forward, uh, if he was revived, to doing things he'd never been able to do. For example, because of his war injuries, he was never able to ski. He said to me in his last year of his life that he hoped he could become revived and, and then get a chance to, uh, to ski for the first time if his legs were, were fixed up. Uh, so he saw a real benefit to a much longer life. And um, you know I see the same. Uh, I'm 61 and um, maybe I've got, I hope I've got uh, another 20 or 30 years but that's not very much time, really. I would, I've, I'm a lawyer. I think I've done pretty well in my chosen profession. But if I had my absolute druthers and I didn't have to look at the prospect of old age slowing me down soon, I might look at a second career. Uh, I'm not going to do that, in part because I know it takes a long time to get really good at something, and I don't have that time. Well, I really would like to have that time. Now, a key, then, to making this achievable is the fact that People in cryonics believe, I believe, that in the future, uh, we're not just going to be able to cure what people think of today as diseases, 
but we'll be able to retar retard and, and eventually reverse aging. Because aging, after all, is simply another disease, simply another defect in the mechanism. And uh, there's early work being done right now that may lead to big breakthroughs in terms of aging research. So people in cryonics think that 80 or 90 doesn't have to be the end of your life, that in the future it will be much longer. And for those of us living today, the chance to take advantage of that comes through cryonics. Isn't 92 a long enough life? Well, you know, it wasn't for my father, it's not for me, and it's not for lots of people in cryonics. Uh, one, one other way to look at it, um, it takes people, or at least it took me, 40 or 50 or maybe 60 years uh, to figure out how to go about the business of living in a halfway sensible way. And uh, now that maybe I've figured it out, maybe not, uh, I'd like an opportunity to live and enjoy the benefits of, of that experience. Uh, I don't want it. To, I don't want to suddenly, now that I've figured it out a little bit, have to start slowing down and suffering from aging. And cryonics gives us that chance. This sounds like a family business. Is this why you're involved? Uh, well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, certainly, I learned about cryonics from my father at an early age. For most people, cryonics sounds like a radical idea. It never did to me. It always sounded like an obvious idea to me because it was something I knew about. And I knew, like I know today, uh, one thing for sure. If you're not frozen, you're not coming back. And I believed, as I believe today, that in the future, people are going to be able to live much longer, that they're going to benefit from the kinds of advances in technology that have been happening now for you know, 100 years or more, that that's going to continue. And so given those premises, there's one logical thing to do, and that is, Try to take advantage of that for yourself. Try to be frozen. Uh, people in cryonics say we can't be sure that cryonics will work, but we can be sure that if you don't try that, you don't have a lot of options. What makes you think that people can be revived in the future? Well, there's two parts to that. Let me talk first about the idea of medical improvement generally. There are millions of people alive today who would be dead but for current te medical technology that didn't exist in the past. Whether antibiotics, organ transplants, even chemotherapy. And so there's every reason to believe that there'll be those same advances in medical technology continuing into the future. And so that there will be an opportunity then for people who die today of something that today is incurable uh, will have a chance to live tomorrow. What about freezing technology? Well, you're right that the other part of the equation is, will the technology for freezing and more importantly revival for people frozen today be available in the future? And cryobiology, freezing research, is another area where there have been significant advances and just like medical technology in all areas has improved steadily over time, we expect the same from uh, cryobiology so that freezing that occurs today, uh, the damage we believe uh, is limited and there's good reason to believe can be reversible in the future. Do you freeze people before they die? Yeah, we don't freeze people before they die because uh, somebody might consider that um, uh, unlawful, maybe murder. Uh, and so we are very careful, scrupulously careful at the Cryonics Institute that people are only frozen after legal death is pronounced. Isn't it too late after they're dead? Uh, you, know, you know, it's not, and that's really a central part of the cryonics premise. Death is not a point at which the light is switched off, and, you know, one moment you're alive and running around, and the other moment, um, you know, you're a piece of wood. Uh, that's not how it works. The body uh, undergoes deterioration over time, though at a certain point rapidly, and death, legal death, is the point at which, under our current criteria, a person can't be revived. Many, many people have been revived in the past when their heart stops, uh, when other things have occurred that might have been considered um, death in the past. So, so, so the definition of death, in essence, is when the doctor gives up. And the point about cryonics is, in the future, the doctor's not going to give up so easily. 
And therefore, someone who is dead by today's criteria, if you can stop those processes uh, as soon as possible after legal death, that person may not be viewed as dead in the future. Uh, Billy Crystal said in the movie The Princess Bride, uh, you're not quite dead. Um, it's, just, it's, a, it's a movie, but, uh, but the idea is still the same. What's the scientific evidence that cryonics works? Well, we don't know for sure that people frozen today will be revived, of course. Cryonics is all based on uh, a bet on future advancements, as I've indicated. But we do know that there have been significant successes in cryobiology. At some levels, uh, freezing and reviving is routine, like frozen sperm, for example. Uh, there have been successes with mammalian embryos. There have been partial successes with mammalian organs. Uh, and it's another area where we're seeing steady advancement and we have every reason to believe that that advancement will continue and we hope that people frozen today will be revivable by that future technology. So you're betting on future technology? Yeah, cryonics is a bet, certainly. We, we think it's a great bet for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, you're, you're not betting a whole lot if you're otherwise dead. The, the alternative is not, not too great. Uh, my father used to say it's having dirt thrown in your face. Uh, and additionally, betting on technology improving has always been a winning bet. Put another way, all the people who bet that technology would not improve lost their bets. That's a sucker bet. And I'll give you just a couple examples. There are so many. H.G. Uh, Wells, the famous science fiction visit visionary, said in 1902 that heavier than air flight would never be possible. Well, the Wright brothers proved him wrong one year later. Uh, Thomas Watson in 1940 said that there would never be a need for more than six computers in the world. Thomas Watson was the head of IBM Corporation, and yet he thought that, and of course he could not have been more wrong. So every time somebody says the technology is not going to improve, it's not going to be there, they've been wrong. The people who bet on these improvements, those are the people who've been right, and that's the cryonic spin. Isn't this an awfully radical idea? Well, cryonics is radical, and it's radical because we are betting on radical improvement in the future. Uh, if you don't believe that medical technology is going to radically improve our ability to defeat disease, defeat things like aging, extend lives, then cryonics won't make a lot of sense to you. But if you think those things are going to happen in the future, then it is only logical if you're around today to try to see if there's a way you could get there and there's only one way and that's through being frozen. The nice thing about being frozen is that you are at a temperature, liquid nitrogen, that is so cold that really nothing changes. So if you are frozen you can hang on and we'll see if we're right about future technology. Should people be worried that cryonics is a money-making scheme? Well, people should not be worried that the Cryonics Institute is engaged in money-making schemes or scams or anything of the sort. CI is a non-profit membership corporation. Uh, we have exactly one paid staff person full-time. Uh, the officers and directors get paid nothing. An awful lot of what people do is volunteer work. What I'm doing right now is volunteer work. Uh, and people join CI not because they want to make money, they don't. They join it because they want an opportunity to live longer for themselves and their families. Uh, our financial statements are an open book. Anyone who's interested can learn whatever they want about CI. Uh, but this is not within a thousand miles of a money-making effort. It's an effort to try to preserve our lives. How much does it cost to be frozen? Uh, because CI is nonprofit and a membership organization, and because CI has worked very hard to be affordable, it, it's surprisingly cheap to be frozen. The minimum payment, uh, depending on the circumstances, ranges from twenty-eight to thirty-five thousand dollars, and that's a one-time payment. And much of those funds are utilized as an investment source, uh, the interest from which, the income from which is used to indefinitely maintain our patients. That doesn't sound very expensive, but not everybody has that amount of money available. Does CI help with financing? Well, CI does not loan money to people. 
One thing that's very important to our organization is that we remain financially stable and CI is neither a borrower nor a lender. We have no debt and we require that people be able to pay uh, at the time of freezing uh, to be frozen. However, there is a financing mechanism that exists that makes it affordable even for people for whom twenty-eight dollars to $35,000 in cash is difficult and that is typically life insurance. Many of CI's members finance their freezings through term life insurance policies with the Cranix Institute as the beneficiary. Um, that's true of me, for example, and true of many of our other members. And so depending on your age, you know, that may require no more than a payment of a few hundred dollars uh, per year uh, to maintain that term life insurance. How can you afford to provide it so cheaply? CI has worked very hard to try to keep its costs down. And because, as I've mentioned, it's a nonprofit membership organization, we don't have a lot of expensive salaries to pay. Uh, CI's research has involved both improving the freezing process and also improving its equipment so that it can operate in the most safe and most cost efficient way. People are stored for the long term in large, what we call cryo capsules which are kind of like large vacuum capsules. And those capsules have gotten more and more efficient over the years, which means that the liquid nitrogen in them, though it does very slowly boil off and has to be replenished, does that more slowly than it ever did. And that means that very little liquid nitrogen is needed to replenish the capsules every year. And that means that the cost is less uh, than it has been in the past. So we've been able to keep costs down, and that's why we're able to uh, to, to give patients an opportunity at um, a very low price. Does everyone pay that amount? Uh, I said twenty-eight to thirty-five thousand is the minimum. That's all that's required. However, a lot of CI members pay more than the minimum, and the reason is pretty simple. We do so because we want the organization to succeed. We want it to last for the long term, and so we want to provide it with more capital. Um, Many members have made six-figure bequests to the organization, uh, and uh, other members plan on doing so. I intend to pay substantially more than the minimum uh, when I'm frozen, and um, that's helped CI to be successful. What about inflation? Well, everybody worries about inflation. CI's prices have been the same since the organization was founded in 1976. And you will be hard put to find anybody who can say that for any good or service. That over 35 years, more than 35 years, the price has not gone up. As I mentioned, the way CI can do that is both because we don't pay a lot of salaries and because we've improved the technology to keep the costs going down. Now, nobody can promise that's going to be true uh, forever, but it is true that CI has a good track record at trying to keep costs down, and we hope to continue that. What is CI's financial status? CI is a very stable organization, as I mentioned. Uh, CI has no debt. It owns its building outright. Uh, CI plans for the future. We always have extra um, capsules ready to be used that have been built. And uh, we are doing our best to be, to be there for the long term. Again, we don't make any guarantees. Nobody can. Uh, but CI's members which include a lot of professionals, including financial professionals, lawyers, and others, are working very hard to plan to try to maximize our chances of being around uh, long enough so that people can be revived. How many people are involved in cryonics? Uh, I don't know how many people are in the cryonics movement worldwide. Uh, CI has more than 1,000 members, and as I mentioned, has more than 100 patients in storage. How long will people have to be frozen? You know, that's a pretty good question. Um, I'm confident about the fact that future technology is going to involve radical improvements, as I've mentioned. Uh, what I'm not confident about, I don't know how anybody could be, is how fast it's going to happen. Um, because while betting on future technological growth has always been the right bet, it's not always happened as fast as people think. I remember when I was a kid, the movie 2001 came out, and uh, they had um, hotels in orbit 
uh, in, in the year 2001. Um, we don't have those hotels in orbit today. We don't have the flying cars from the Jetsons. On the other hand, uh, we have uh, we have smartphones and we have computers that go far beyond what people predicted at that time. So, you know, can I predict or can anybody predict when certain technological advances are going to take place? We, we cannot. Uh, on the other hand, the nice thing about being stored at liquid nitrogen temperature is nothing's going to be happening to your body at that temperature. So our patients can afford to wait if they have to. A lot of things can happen after years. What happens, for example, if the power goes out? A common question we always get is, what if the power goes out? And I'm happy to say there's an easy answer to that, and that is nothing much. And the reason is that CI's storage capsules are not powered by electricity. They are essentially large, large vacuum capsules, and the vacuum acts as insulation. Now, it is true that periodically um, that vacuum is maintained through the use of electric power, but that happens at most once every week or two for a short period of time. So, and it doesn't have to happen that often uh, because the, the, the capsules are maintained at their most efficient rate that way, but they're still gonna be, um, they're still gonna be very effective and any leak is gonna be very slow even if you didn't use any electric power to maintain that vacuum for a longer period of time. So the short answer is if there were a power failure, a sudden power failure, Nothing's going to change, uh, and there'll be plenty of time to get that power back on and to continue to maintain the capsules. What's the freezing process? The process has a number of stages. At the first stage, it's very important to begin to cool the body down using ice and water cooled with ice uh, as soon as possible after legal death and CI has some equipment for patients who are on hand that helps that occur, equipment designed by CI. Uh, at later stages then, the blood is replaced by cryoprotective agents, and CI has chosen those agents based on research in the field and the research it's commissioned, uh, and has over time uh, improved choices and improved the technology in terms of those cryoprotective agents that are used. Uh, after that, the body continues to be cooled down, um, first to dry ice, then to liquid nitrogen temperatures. CI has a computer-controlled cooling box that carefully controls and monitors the body so that it is, it is cooled down to liquid nitrogen temperatures in a deliberate way so as to minimize any damage uh, through that process. And then ultimately, uh, the bodies are stored in cryocapsules that have been uh, designed and improved by CI for the maximum reliability um, and also the maximum efficiency so that these capsules have very little uh, boil off of liquid nitrogen over time and therefore are extremely efficient and the cost of maintenance is extremely low. What if I change my mind? Can I get my money back? Well, CI, as I've indicated, um, wants to protect its patients and wants to protect its financial stability. And both those things mean that once a patient is frozen, if your relative says decides they change their mind and they want to unfreeze you, we're not going to let them do that. Uh, they'll have to go to court to try to get that done and our contract makes that clear. We think that protects you as the patient and it protects CI so that once CI has expended funds on a patient, uh, it doesn't have to return those funds. However, before the freezing process has begun for a patient before CI begins to do things to freeze a patient and to prepare for freezing a patient. Uh, funds usually aren't even paid to CI and therefore uh, there's nothing to be refunded. Typically if uh, money is funded through life insurance policy and that funding is in place and CI knows it, we proceed if someone dies to freeze the patient. On the other hand, if uh, somebody signs up for CI, signs a contract two years from now, decides they no longer want to be frozen, and simply changes the beneficiary on their life insurance policy and lets CI know, uh, then that patient will no longer be funded and CI gets no money. So this does not require a 
payments in advance to CI. Some members choose to do that and those payments are refundable. Most do not. They simply uh, take steps so that the money is available to CI and those steps are always revocable. Why do you want more people involved in cryonics? You know, at least speaking for myself, I'm not interested in saving the world. I'm interested in saving myself and my family. Uh, but you need a lot of people working together to save yourself and your family. And so people in cryonics are trying to bolster and grow the cryonics movement so we can all work together and increase our chances of uh, having a successful, stable organization and being revived in the future. For someone who is not old and sick, what's the hurry? Well, again, there's no hurry unless you suddenly get sick and die unexpectedly. Uh, people sometimes die of problems that are foreseeable and take a long time, and then they have time to prepare. People sometimes, even then, die slowly, but because they're old and sick, uh, they're feeble and it's harder for them to make the preparations that need to be made for cryonics. Uh, people also die unexpectedly of heart attacks, of accidents, of lots of things that they could not anticipate. And I think the answer is that you need to make arrangements for cryonics, if you believe in cryonics, uh, when you're healthy so that you are protected and your family's protected uh, if something does occur. Um, I think I'm vigorous. I get up and exercise every morning. I intend to be here a long time, but I also am prepared and have my contract signed and my arrangements made so that just in case I'm wrong, um, I am covered in terms of being chronically preserved. And for people who think cryonics makes sense, uh, that's the prudent thing to do, we think. What if someone wants to learn more? The best place to learn more is to go to CI's website, cryonics.org. There's a lot of information there. But you can also certainly call CI, talk to members. There are always people available to talk to you. I am among many others. Uh, you can come to the organization and view the facility. Uh, CI is an open book and we're happy to talk to new members and gaining new members all the time. Any final thoughts? I think the, the most important thing I'd emphasize yet again is being prepared. Because I'm convinced there are a lot of people out there who've heard of the Cranics idea, say it makes sense. It's something I'll worry about in the future. Uh, it's a little radical. Uh, I think I'd like to do it, but there's no hurry. And the problem is sometimes you don't know when there's a hurry. And so I would say don't put it off. Make preparations now. Work with us so that you can be protected and your family can be protected. Thank you, David. That was very interesting. Thank you.